मैं आप सबका स्वागत करती हूँ आज के इस पैनल डिस्कशन में आ, ये पूरा ट्रांसलेट करना ज़रा मेरे लिए मुश्किल है तो इसलिए ओके सो देन पीपल कैन टेक दे स्नैक्स इन सिट राइट everybody is welcome to sit down along with their snacks so there is no problem with that please take your snacks and sit down we'll start we were to start at 5 and it's a longish um, uh, program we have 17 speakers so we have to keep in mind the time given to us uh, i would on behalf of uh, inter religious solidarity council i'd like to invite father michael to welcome everybody last few days it was raining so heavily uh, we were wondering uh, how to go about about this program but the response what we see is very much encouraging in today's world we all need to come together uh, from different religions and cultures to build a society of humanity so i stand before you on behalf of the organizations interreligious solidarity council institute of indian culture and center for the study of society and secularism jahan ek dusron ko baat karne ka bhi time nahi hota hai aise mahol mein hum sab ko ek din kam se kam agar hafte mein ek din nikal sake ek ghanta ka time nikal sake ya ek month mein या एक महीने में कम से कम कुछ टाइम निकाल सके वहाँ बैठ के हम अभी हम स्वामी जी से ही डिस्कशन कर रहे थे कि जिस तरह से आयोजन किया है हम लोग अलग अलग फील्ड में जाते हैं अलग अलग संस्थाओं के माध्यम से जो आयोजित होते हैं कार्यक्रम में शरीक होते हैं अपनी बात रखते हैं लेकिन एक मिनट मैडम बस और बात रखते हैं लेकिन हम सबको अपने सोसाइटी में रह ऐसे छोटे छोटे प्रोग्राम या या मीटिंगें जो हम समाज में अगर घर परिवार में तकलीफ हैं या सोसाइटी में तकलीफ हैं या मोहल्ले में या शहर में तकलीफ है तो हमें उसको निराकरण करना चाहिए उसके जो द्वंद हैं उसकी जो शंकाएं हैं हम एक दूसरों को अगर सॉल्यूशन ढूंढेंगे तो मैं समझता हूं निश्चित ही ये सॉल्यूशन हो सकता है और हम लोग अभी आज से इस कार्यक्रम से एक प्रेरणा जरूर लेके जा रहे हैं सर आपने जो हमेशा इतने अच्छे कार्यक्रम करते हैं मैं आपके दूसरी बार आया हूँ आपके कार्यक्रम में और यहाँ से एक प्रेरणा जरूर लेके जाऊँगा हम और स्वामी जी ने ये लिया है कि हम हर महीने हर मंथ में जो लास्ट संडे होगा हम उसमें एक ऐसा एक सामाजिक जिसमें सभी लीडर आर रिलीजन्स के लीडर होंगे और हम हम इसमें एक डिस्कशन करेंगे एक पैनल रहेगा कैसे हम समाज में अपने जो हमारे आसपास के लोग हैं हम उसमें डिस्कस करके समाज में एक अच्छाई जो जिस रिलीजन का है वो माने अपने रिलीजन कोई दिक्कत नहीं लेकिन जब हम अपने रिलीजन को और बेहतर से बेहतर अपने लोगों तक अपना मैसेज पहुंचाएं तो मुझे लगता है बहुत अच्छी बात होगी और इसे प्रयास करना चाहिए ओम नमः थैंक यू धन्यवाद स्वामी जी स्वामी जी ने बताया कि अगर कोई समाज में अगर परेशानी और इस तरह का भेदभाव पैदा करना चाहता है तो वो कर सकता है और अभी हम देख रहे हैं अभी जो यूपी में एक सर्क्यूनल निकारा है कावड़ियाँ जो जा रहे हैं उनके उनके वहाँ पे जो स्टॉल लगाते थे खाने के स्टॉल लगाते थे उनके इसमें एक सर्क्यूलर निकारा है कि लोगों को अपने नाम और वहाँ पर उस स्टॉल पर काम करने वाले एम्प्लॉयज़ के नाम आज तक कावड़िया कावर तो बहुत सारे प्रदेशों में चल लेके जाते हैं लोग बहुत सारे प्रदेशों से लेके जाते हैं लेकिन कभी भी इस तरह की धार्मिक कम्युनल रायट्स होने की कोई भी कभी भी सुना नहीं गया था और अभी इस तरह का जो आ, आ, ये है माहौल एक ज़बरदस्ती फैलाने की बात की जा रही है ये एक सर्कुलर से क्योंकि आप कावड़िया शायद मुसलमान नाम देख के या दलित नाम देख करके उन लोगों के 
स्टॉल्स से नहीं खाएंगे तो आर्थिक दृष्टि से भी लोगों का नुकसान करने का और कौमवाद फैलाने का काम कुछ लोग कर रहे हैं और ऐसी परिस्थिति में बहुत बड़ा अपहिल टास्क हो जाता है कि हम कैसे सद्भावना बना के रखें धन्यवाद स्वामी जी आई वुड नाउ लाइक टू इनवाइट फिरदौस पावरी जी ही इज़ करेंटली द मैनेजिंग हेड ऑफ गमाड़िया आग्यारी इन फोर्ट मुंबई सर यू हैव फाइव मिनट्स गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन एट दन सेट लेट मी थैंक दी ऑर्गेनाइजर्स फॉर क्रिएटिंग अ प्लेटफॉर्म डेडिकेटेड टू ब्रिंगिंग हार्ट्स टूगेदर इन अ मीनिंगफुल एंड स्पिरिचुअल मैनर विद अ कमिटमेंट टू फॉस्टरिंग फेथ ओरिएंटेड कनेक्शन एंड क्रिएटिंग लाइफ लॉन्ग बॉन्ड्स टॉलरेंस is something that has sadly become an alien concept in today's contemporary world the levels of impatience have soared to where things today happen at the touch of a finger tip the jet age has taken people further apart rather than bringing them closer at times like these i can only think of one universal idea that can bring bridge this gap and that is religion as you would have probably guessed i am a parsi i have schooled at the don bosco high school in matunga and my alma mater has always taught me that basically all religions have the same tenets it is man who has divided faith into independent pockets eons ago perhaps millions and millions of years ago shrishti kainat the universe was born god made his beautiful creations and then god created man to enjoy these beautiful creations presently from all the plants animals and birds he chose to bless his greatest creation that is man us with the power to think to feel to act rationally Oh yes we are his prize creations but what have we done we are at each other's throats all the time we fight over pieces of land over pieces of gold over oil look at nature has any animal species ever caused extinction for the other but look at us we are a threat to our own brethren bloodthirsty power hungry monsters we have become we have forgotten the value of life and to live and let live I hail from one of the oldest religions in this world the Zoroastrianism our prophet Zarathustra has given us three simple principles that is humata hukta and huvarashta which basically means good thoughts good words and good deeds they are the easiest yet the most profound and towering concepts upon which the very core of humanity is based follow them and you will never falter heed the path of righteousness and you will never take an immoral step a real preacher will always teach you to know your inner self and will thus take you nearer to god we are peace loving people and a community that has been able to laugh at themselves to bring a smile to all of others in the contemporary cosmopolitan society that we live in mumbai we are sadly living in contempt rather than in peaceful coexistence everyone has the right to live without fear and isolation physical violence and religious intolerance can cause and so there should be no discrimination based on religious beliefs and practices utmost caution should be taken by all of us to not hurt the religious sentiments of our other neighbors while celebrating our festivals come rain or sunshine whether it is deluge or a drought a terror attack or a bomb blast the spirit of mumbai and the grit of its people has always been exemplary and this comes from the common thread of faith that they have in the greatest religion of all and that is humanity so teach our children to love one another not just one particular god or goddess because loving and serving your fellow men is the greatest service you can render to any god loving god's mean doing good deeds that would make god love you if you serve the lord's greatest creation that is all other human beings and then in turn you are serving him so how does the senseless killing of one another make any religious sense how can we justify murder in the name of religion we must stop this should change in every house of god be it a church a temple a mosque a dargah a gurudwara a synagogue a monastery or an agyari unless we begin to preach tolerance to our people and spread love for one another we will have no one and nothing to defend encourage interactions among different faiths like this meeting here today let there be iftar party in a temple let there be langar in a mosque let the festival of holi be celebrated in a church and let eid be celebrated in a gurudwara 
if you do not do this for your children, what will you teach them to do for themselves? What will make them successful human beings? Real beauty is not what eyes can behold, but what the heart can hold. But was what we see with our eyes will vanish some one day. But what we store in our hearts will stay forever. I would like to conclude. Look at the mighty river. It always flows and keeps on generously giving her water to all that cross her path. But her waters never decrease. Follow the simple mantra of good thoughts, good words and good deeds and then experience for yourself the flow of wealth will never decrease. Such is the miracle of God. Thank you. Thank you so much and with, with this good thought, good work and good deed we go to the next speaker. Uh, our next speaker is Seema Indorwala and Seema is from the Baha'i uh, faith. Uh, she is actively involved in various activity of Baha'i faith, conducts youth empowerment program with junior college students. Seema, you have five minutes. I am really very grateful and thankful to all the people who have gathered over here today to come and participate and understand the peaceful coexistence and the various uh, people who spoke from different backgrounds, different faiths, have really reiterated the idea that all the religions, all the prophets have said the same thing. The eternal truth is same. What varies is just the time in which they come. And each age has different uh, challenges. Uh, age, if we say of... Uh, 500 years ago was very different from what we are living today. So the challenges are always different and we have to learn. So the laws uh, which are given, so there are uh, eternal truths and then there are social laws in every religion. So it is the social laws. So, <laughs> okay, so it is the social laws which always change for the time in which they have come. Every prophet or every manifestation of God uh, in the age they have come, they give us the social laws for that age. So in the Baha'i writings, uh, uh, Baha'u'llah is a manifestation of God for this age. And he has given us these profound insights on the principles of unity, oneness, essential harmony of religions, where he extends our vision, like, uh, like up till now, uh, humanity was, a, was at a stage of uh, childhood, uh, youth, and now is the time when humanity is at a time of maturity. So he has extended our vision to global peace, not just um, to our land, to which country we are staying, because these problems are faced everywhere in the world. What we are facing in India is faced everywhere in the world. Globally, it is the same. So uh, Baha'u'llah has extended our vision saying the earth is but one country and mankind its citizens. And this foundational principle underscores the interconnectedness of all the peoples and the unity of humanity calling us to strive for a world where diversity is celebrated and unity prevails. There is another quote, I think it was reiterated by um, two, three um, earlier speakers, but I would just like to uh, give this quote which Baha'u'llah says, O children of men, know ye not why we created you all from the same dust, that no one should exalt himself over the other. Ponder at all times in your hearts how ye were created. Since we have created you all from the same substance, it is incumbent upon you to be as one soul, to walk with the same feet and to dwell in the same land. That from your inmost being, by your deeds and actions, the signs of oneness and a sense of, deta a sense of detachment may be made manifest. Such is my counsel to you, O concourse of light. He ye this counsel that ye may obtain the fruit of holiness from the tree of wondrous glory. So, I know the bell has rung. I'll just very shortly, I tried to analyze 
that when all the faiths, all the religions are speaking of the same eternal truth and peaceful coexistence, then why is there so much unrest and um, the riots and everything that we face? So, one of the causes is, um, one of the causes or the breeding ground is prejudice. Prejudice of race, of religion, political opinion, and in religion, in racial attitudes, in national bias, and in politics. So long as these um, uh, prejudices continue to breed, we will never be able to come together. So long as will the foundations of the social order will be blown into the four winds, and humanity will be exposed to direst peril. Peaceful coexistence in multicultural societies can be achieved through the abandonment of prejudice and acquisition of morals and virtues. So I end with this. Uh, Bahala says, ye are all the fruits of one tree and the leaves of one branch. And he has likened the world of being to a single tree and all its peoples to the leaves, blossoms, and fruits. Therefore, it is needful uh, if the blossom ha and the flowers and fruits have to um, uh, blossom, then it will depend on the flourishing of the sweetness of the fruit. For this reason, let them purify their sight and behold all mankind as leaves and blossoms of the fruit of the tree of being. And let them at all times be concerned with doing a kindly thing to their fellow beings, offering love, thoughtful consideration, and help. And um, there are some um, magazines uh, put at the counter. If uh, people wish, can just pick it up to know more about the Baha'i faith and what we are doing uh, in the social uh, work. Thank you. Thank you, Seema. Um, of all the speakers have spoken about two things particularly, that we have come from one, something which is one and we have diversified and we inherently know how to coexist. Some people are distorting and we have, no, oh, we have to be conscious about who are distorting this and we cannot, we will not be able to enjoy the fruits of the tree that Seema was speaking unless we are, we are compassionate towards each other. So it's important that we peacefully coexist. Uh, our two earlier speakers gave us a plan of action also. Uh, uh, Swamiji, both the Swamiji's from uh, ISKCON and uh, uh, from Ramakrishna Mission, they are willing to dedicate one, last Sunday of every month for these kinds of activities, as I understand, and uh, multi-religious programs, celebrations of each other's faith is very important and that's how probably we'll become tolerant towards each other. So uh, there's a logistical information that I want to give you. Uh, the toilets are right behind and since you have come from far and it's the rainy season, um, you can just use it, yeah. Uh, so now I would like to invite uh, Yogi Raj, Dr. Mangesh Da. He's the founder of Sadhguru Mangesh Da Kriya Yoga Foundation. Uh, and the aim of this is to spread the science of Kriya Yoga to masses. And he has been our speaker in multiple forums. You have five minutes. Hello, Chief. Thank you. This is a bale and this bale is very important in life. This is a church, there is a bell. we always ring. We always use this, the gong, in all our Hindu temples. Mujha Swami Ji ne motivate kiya Hindi ke liye, to mein prayas karunga ki Hindi mein aap jaysi Hindi bol nahi paunga, lekin sikhunga aap se. Sare mahanubhav ko mera pyar bara namashkar. All my sisters, brothers, thank you so much for coming and showing your integrity. And we are all here because of the main reason. We are all one. All these programs, what we did earlier, 
it is is i think a very good crowd and i think the common part is we are all one and i feel that i mean hindu dharm mein sabse pehle jinke bare mein log sochte hai vivekanand ji unko 2 minute mile the thank you for giving 3 additional minutes wahan pe 2 minute mein unhone jo pure शिकागो ने सारी जगह पे जो फ्रंट पेज पे फोटो आए थे फॉर दिस वन फर्स्ट सेंटेंस माय डियर सिस्टर्स एंड ब्रदर्स नो बडी एक्सपेक्टेड दैट टाइम दैट वननेस विथ एवरीबडी और दूसरा उनका सेंटेंस था सहिष्णु दबाव सहिष्णुता का मतलब होता है हम सब एक है सबसे पहले धर्म बाद में आया इंसान पहले आया वूम के अंदर जब हम सारे कोर में थे उसके बाद में जो कॉर्ड कट हो गए उसके बाद में पहला नाद जो था वो था हमारा पहला रोना ऑक्सीजन हमारे फॉन्टेनल में चले गए हमने पहली सांस ली वहां से जो शुरुआत होती है बच्चे को मालूम नहीं है कौन से धर्म का है उसके बाद में शुरू होती है हिंदू धर्म में वहां पर लिखा है देव देव कहाँ प्रतीकात्मक है तो मातृ देवो भव मां को ही देव तू ही देव है मुझे मालूम नहीं कौन भगवान है पितृ देवो भव लेकिन उसके बाद तीसरा आता है अतिथि देवो भव इसका मतलब होता है जो भी मेरे दरवाजे पे आए उसको मैं प्रणाम करता हूं वो भगवान है होता यह है कि हर धर्म में एक कॉमन पार्ट है हिंदू धर्म में पांच हमारे जो एलिमेंट से उसको हम पूछते हैं क्या आप किसी धर्म में इनको कोई पूछता नहीं है सब धर्म में पूछते हैं पृथ्वी को सब मानते हैं जल को मानते हैं अग्नि को मानते हैं वायु को मानते हैं आकाश तत्व को मानते हैं हिंदू धर्म में दिया का महत्व है मैं क्रिया योगी हूं क्रिया योग में हम वहां मूर्ति पूजा नहीं करते हम दिया को मानते दिया का अनुभव करना है यहां आप कैंडल लगाते हैं यहाँ पे हर एक जन अपने घर में क्योंकि किसी को अंधेरा पसंद नहीं है कल गुरु पूर्णिमा है गुरु शब्द का मतलब होता है जो अंधेरे से उजाला दिखाता है वो गुरु वो है सखा वो है मित्र ऐसा गुरु और इसकी पूर्णिमा जो व्यास जी ने शुरू की थी वो है और मुझे तो ये पूरा हॉल यहाँ खचाखच लाइट से भरा हुआ दिखता है सारे ज्ञानी लोग यहाँ पे बैठे हुए है मुझे इतना ही लगता है धर्म में अधर्म लाने वाले लोग किसी दूसरी कुर्सी पर बैठे यहां कोई हो ही नहीं सकता वो डाल रहे वहां पर जहर डाल रहे हर बार क्योंकि उनको कुछ चाहिए उसके बाद आदमी बाहर निकल के कैसे अंगूठा दिखाए देखो ये ये फिंगर इंगर यहां पे कुछ टीका लगा है कोई भी अच्छा आदमी इंसान चाहेगा नहीं कि हिंसा हो जाए कोई भी नहीं चाहेगा हम सब प्रेम की भावना से अपने अपने धर्म में जीते उसका भेदभाव करने का कोई मतलब ही नहीं है लेकिन तो भी कुछ लोग मैंने सबसे अच्छी बात कुछ लोगों में देखी अभी अभी मैं कश्मीर से आ रहा हूं और कश्मीर में लोगों से मैंने बात की इतनी अच्छी बातें मेरे साथ उन्होंने की है आप आना कभी आ रहे बोले हम आपका इंतजार करेंगे और मैंने भी बोला अगर हो सके तो हमारा यह ग्रुप लेकर हम लोग वहां जाएंगे और मैं ऑर्गेनाइज करूंगा इतने अच्छे हमारे वहां पर संबंध हो गए कितने लोग मिले जो गले लग रहे हैं कि आप जो बोल रहे हैं बस यही है तो हमें चाहिए हमें क्या पड़ा है यहां इनके ये इनके ये गोली बार कर रहे हैं हमें थोड़ी अच्छा लगता है सारे जगह पे यही बात है और मुझे ऐसे लगता है कि एक आनंद हंसना मेरे गुरुजी ने मुझे एक बात सिखाई जब मैं उनके साथ रहता था उन्होंने बोले कि सोने के पहले बेटा हमेशा देखना तुम्हारे सामने कितने लोग आए कितने मुस्कुरा रहे थे समझना अपना बैंक बैलेंस बहुत अच्छा है लेकिन उदास चेहरे का आदमी जो हंस ही नहीं सकता है वहां पर वहां पर हम ये सोचेंगे कि अपने मन की घंटी बजनी चाहिए अपने दिल की घंटी बजनी चाहिए और उसको जगाओ और उसको कहो जरा थोड़ा मुस्कुराओ लाइफ इज ब्यूटीफुल एवरीबडी इज ब्यूटीफुल बिकॉज गॉड कैन नॉट क्रिएट एनी बडी बैड एंड दैट इज द वे आई थिंक वी कैन इंटीग्रेट एंड मीट लेट्स नॉट शेक अवर हैंड्स लेट्स मर्ज अवर हार्ट विथ इच अदर थैंक यू सो मच मफ माई डियर्स थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू स्वामी जी फॉर कीपिंग अप विद द टाइम नाउ आई वुड लाइक टू इन्वाइट स्वामी जी फ्रॉम 
Iskon, Janu, how do you pronounce? Nitai Das. Nitai Das, and he has mentioned Hari. Uh, he is a uh, graduate from IIT Hyderabad in mechanical engineering. He has worked in uh, LNT Mumbai, and last 10 years he's a monk at Iskon Juhu. And uh, he has done his Bhakti sh uh, Shastri TCC Bhakti Vaibhav certificate course. Yeah, he's also active on social media, so we all can follow him. Thank you very much uh, for uh, inviting and I'm very ha happy to see all of you here. Uh, so I'm from uh, South India, I am not very good at Hindi, but I will use some Sanskrit words which can relate to us. So basically, uh, who, take, who cares for religion nowadays? Nobody, literally speaking, everybody is running behind career, money, Everybody is running behind relationships, <laughs> safety, security. Nobody uh, cares for religion nowadays. Hardly if, some, if someone is caring for religion or faith, higher purpose of human life, that is only intellectual people like all of you. In the Vedic times, there were uh, on Racha Banda, you know, on the, under the street, under the, under the tree, all the young gentlemen, elderly gentlemen, they used to gather in the evening times, uh, at these times, they used to discuss Ramayana, Mahabharat, some uh, valuable moral lessons, human values, they used to discuss. So those people, only intellectual people who care for religion. Nowadays, youngsters, businessmen, everybody are very, very quite occupied with their career plans. So I'm very happy to be along with you, among all of you. I'm very, very humbled to see very elderly people and experienced in your practices. So for three things I would like to highlight in this few minutes. Number one, that the, we all, we individually we are having some faith and we are practicing some practice, path, sadhana, at our level, with our parampara, whatever we are in. But uh, such kind of different, different va various pa faiths are already considered previously in the dawn of ages, no? Previously. In the Vedic times, there are all various types of people. There are some people who think that I am the God. You are the God. Everybody is God. There are some people who think that there is no God. God created and died. There are some people who think that God is very old. There are some people who have think that God has a form. There are some other people who think God doesn't have form. Such various faiths are already there in our Vedic text. And they have some practices. Still now, this is nothing a new. Having a different, different religions are nothing a new for us. It is from Sanatana Dharma, from the dawn of the creation. Such various faiths are there, various practices also there. But still, they lived very happily, you know, with the harmony, peacefully. They lived very happily. Still now, we can... Uh, Coexist, we can solidify, right? I I I R S D. We can solidify our faiths, come together and practice this uh, sadhana, whatever we are doing. And second thing, when we practice like that, the society ceases. We everybody, every one of us are leaders of our communities. The society, these youngsters, they look us how we are dealing each other. If we fight among ourselves, they don't like at all. And they lose the faith in religion. So it's all about how we are gathered here together, having snacks together. They, they feel very happily. They, they like it when, we, when they see us uniting like this. So our experiences should be practiced out of uh, utmost experience. We should practice very as a brothers and sisters. So then only we can preach whatever the practices, whatever the faith. We can uplift the communities. We can uplift the humanity to think more than money, more than relationships, more than just food. And 
so we should actually our practices should be more matured enough and the third thing universal brotherhood as swami ji already mentioned uh, so brothers and sisters they can live peacefully and happy when they have real identity one father one nation so our, all our father is supreme lord god we keep different different names for him we see different different dresses in him but we all are when we understand our uh, prabhupad my spiritual master he says that uh, we are not hindus we are not christians we are not muslims we are not indians we are not australians we are not americans when you went to boston he taught the same basic principle he said who are we who are we we are spirit soul atman we are beyond we are beyond this body we are beyond this mind we are beyond this intellectuality so but uh, we practice our life based on considering all these faiths and practices so when we understand that core principle that we are not this body we are not this mind we are not something related to this mind misconceptions when we understand we are the soul and uh, we are the part and parcels of the supreme lord god then the real universal brotherhood will come up then we can live happily sharing each other's experience we can grow each other nicely so these are the three things i would like to rewind once again that such conferences will happen only among the intellectuals not among the fools not among the innocent immature materially attached people number one so such discussions such conferences should happen more and more we should come each other second thing they see our behavior they see our experiences and they learn from it so we are the leaders in our, at our levels we should inspire them in practicing their faith more seriously going ahead more and third thing real brotherhood real universal brotherhood will will come when we understand our true identity as a spirit souls a part and parcels of supreme lord the children of the god thank you very much thank you uh, swami ji uh, i don't need to reiterate what he said he said three things and we have to bring that in practice and it's very important to do so so we have to have many more programs like this so that we can spread the message of coexistence uh now i would like to invite father sm michael he's the professor of uh, he was the former professor of sociology in the university of mumbai father you have Uh, for the last uh, 40 years i have been doing my research why cultures and religions are different and in my findings i see that geographical factors historical factors power factors and economic factors give difference in cultures for example if you take from kashmir to kanyakumari we have various geographical uh, locations and we can see the difference in dress pattern we can see the difference in food habits and we also can see the differences of the concept of god i have written quite a lot about it but behind all these differences what is important for us is to realize the common humanity so as a a sociologist and also as a christian when i begin to reflect my faith and trying to link my research to a reality i begin to understand that the crux the foundation of christianity is we are all created in the image and likeness of god so whether you are sick black white rich or poor in the eyes of god all of us have dignity and this is the foundation so jesus told us do you know at the end of time how i how i will judge you i was thirsty you came and gave me water i was naked you gave me clothing i was in prison you came in 
visited me and these people will ask him when were you thirsty when you were na- naked when were you in prison that we did all this for you and jesus would tell them in so far as you did to the thirsty man the naked man the man in the prison or the woman in the prison you did it to me and the other side he will tell them that you will not belong to my commu- uh, community or belong to me because i was thirsty i was naked i was in prison you did not do anything for me they would say when were you thirsty when were you in prison they would say, he would say in so far as you did not do to a person who was thirsty you did not do to me so you don't do not belong to me so what is our common humanity enhancing the dignity of every human person whether a leper whether rich or poor whether black or white but they are all they are all created in the image and likeness of god whatever we do to the enhancement of human dignity we are with god thank you very much thank you father he emphasized on something very very important that we have to enhance the human dignity what we see around us is disenfranchisement on the name of caste class religion and we have to go beyond all this and empower people to attain that dignity and that is one of the key work that we all have been involved in uh our next speaker is uh kal uh shahukar he's retired from a leading investment banking company last year he's currently the trustee of empowering mobets trust and a traditional zoroastrian and the traditional zoroastrian trust he'll speak about he'll speak about the topic Uh, ladies and gentlemen on this topic at hand i cannot but reflect on the zoroastrian community who throughout centuries have actually lived the peaceful coexistence rather than just talked about it i give you three examples time permitting for the moment let me take you back in time to 2500 years ago to the land of side of the great the persian empire which stretched all the way from uh 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 western india uh east westward further into the middle east downwards into egypt upwards into eastern regions of europe as well as coming back again in central asia now i would assume some of you have already heard about the persian empire because i believe history is a great teacher and we need to learn from it uh basically the empire of cyrus and you are through various dynasties and forms for well over a thousand years so what is it that made this persian empire covering such a multitude of continents regions cultures and societies so lasting and formidable it is well documented in the old testament here i refer to the old testament over here which again is a part of the bible the book sacred to the jews as well as to the christians over there cyrus is the only non a person of a different fate who's been known as the anointed one so what is it that made cyrus to be termed as the anointed one and even his successors later on like xerxes at of xerxes were all talked about very highly and regarded now what happens is that in those times uh, a conquering army would normally ransack all the towns and villages the subjects would be made slaves and taken away back to their own country which was not the case when cyrus invaded babylon in fact he uh, took over babylon with her without spilling a single drop of blood but that's a story for another time so after he conquered babylon he freed the jews from captivity 
He not only provided them the freedom to live as free men and go to their own homeland, but also using his own funds, rebuilt the, tel uh, the Temple of Solomon in Jerusalem and that the Jews could continue to go to their own homeland as free people and practice their own religion. This was something which was unheard of in those times, 2,500 years ago. At the end of the 19th century, an object was discovered in Iraq, which actually put this biblical, biblical story as proof of history. And this is known as the Cyrus Cylinder. It's a clay cylinder which is currently housed in the British Museum in London. And that exactly matches with what the story was of Cyrus the Great in the Old Testament. So to this effect, the Cyrus Cylinder is known as the first documented Bill of Human Rights. And a copy of this clay cylinder is also kept in the United Nations headquarters in New York City today. I come to the second example where almost a millennium later after Cyrus, the last of the great Sasanian kings was Kushru II. So Kushru had a Christian wife called Shirin. Now some of you may have heard of the story of Shirin and Farhad more popularly. It's the same person, the author who wrote this story 500 years after Kushru has also written another story which many more people would have heard of is the Laila and Majnu story. I'm not getting into the story of Laila and Majnu, but what we do know is that in 613 and 614 AD, Kushru's army invaded Damascus and Jerusalem once again. Among the pillage of war was the true cross. Now what is the true cross? The true cross is basically the cross on which Jesus Christ was actually crucified. It was around in those times. Historians have many theories as to why a Zoroastrian king would unnecessarily take away the true cross which is clearly neither he nor his people had any use of. An issue worth noting by various historians, both hostile and favorable to the Persians, is that no one accused Kushru of disrespecting the cross or destroying it. Indeed, all historians have uh, ensured and documented that he kept it with honor and in safety. Kushru's actions were motivated by his Christian wife, Shirin, who was not just a wife of the king, but also a representative of her own community, the Christians, on behalf of the Christians of Persia. Much later, as a peace offering with the Byzantine Empire, the true cross was returned back to Jerusalem, back to the Christians, in a huge majestic procession with all the other Christian relics which Kushru had accumulated over the time. Hence, once again that we see that whilst the true cross was brought to Persia, it was returned back in honor and magnanimity, keeping in mind the concept of live and let live for peaceful coexistence. The third and the final example which I want to give is when the Parsis migrated from Iran to India and they landed at the port of Sanjan, which is in southern Gujarat. It is said that when the Parsis arrived in Sanjan, the region was ruled by a Hindu king, Jadav Rana. Initially, the king mentioned that his kingdom was completely full and symbolically what he did was he presented a bowl of milk filled right to the brim, thereby expressing that their land has no further place for other people to come in. Even if you pour in a little more milk, the milk will overflow. What Nerio Sang Dawal, who was the spiritual leader of this group of Parsis, what he did was, he carefully added sugar to the milk without spilling even a drop, showing that the Parsis will mix with the locals to, sweet, to sweeten and enrich his kingdom. The king agreed to give them refuge and asked for Parsis to accept the five conditions. Number one was, explain your religion. Number two, lay down your arms. Number three, speak the local language. That's why the mother tongue of Parsis is now Gujarati. Four, adopt the local dress. Parsis wear saris and like Fedosh over here, this is an offshoot of the Gujarati traditional dress which is there. 
and have the marriage ceremonies only after sunset. To this day, the Parsis have adhered to these conditions laid down by King Jadavarana well over a thousand years ago, thus fulfilling the promise made and enriched the land of India in all respects. They took up arms only against various invaders and fought side by side, giving blood and life along with the Hindu veteran. In conclusion, history is a fantastic teacher. If we fail to learn from it, we are doomed to repeat it and suffer the same consequences. Today, there are factions within factions, each having different agendas, each with different degrees of traditionalism and liberalism, and each trying to trump the other, losing sight of the fact that we are all Indians, first and last. We need to look for common ground to unite and a force which binds us all in cohesion. Only time, the great leveler, can tell what the future holds for us. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. Uh, our next speaker is Professor Ranu Jain. Uh, she'll speak about Jainism. She holds a position of professor and chairperson at the Center for Study of Sociology of Education at Tata Institute of Social Science, Mumbai. Good afternoon. Uh, as many speakers have stated, I agree that religion does not contribute towards violence. Religion may kabhi violence nahi hota, wo to hamesha shanti or ओके 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 तो रिलीजन में तो मैंने तो कभी किसी रिलीजन में कोई वायलेंस नहीं देखा वायलेंस फेथ में नहीं है फेथ में तो एक टॉलरेंस है एक खुद के संग संतुष्टि का जीवन जीने की प्रेरणा है वायलेंस होता है पॉलिटिकल मैनिपुलेशन ऑफ फेथ में और ये ये मुद्दा हम लोग आज नहीं उठा रहे क्योंकि सिर्फ पाँच मिनट है पाँच मिनट में आप इतना बड़ा टॉपिक नहीं डील कर सकते और पाँच मिनट में जैनिज़म जैसे एक धर्म के बारे में बोलना भी बहुत मुश्किल है आ, लेकिन मैं बताऊंगी क्योंकि मुझे लगता है कि जैनिज़म के बारे में ज़्यादातर लोगों को बिल्कुल भी पता नहीं है जैनिज़म एक रीज़न ये भी हो सकता है कि बहुत ही एक छोटी सी आ, छोटा सा even less than 5% of indian population are jains no 0.5% we are 0.37 in uh, in accordance to uh, census of india 2011 uh lekin jainism i mean mai jainism se introduced hui jab mai phd kar rahi thi aur mere ko logo ne data dena band kar diya unhone kaha pehle jaake apne dharm ke bare mein maloom karo tab maine baith ke jainism ki philosophy padhi and i was amazed itni progressive aur itni tolerant philosophy maine kahi nahi dekhi thi post modernism ke apan aajkal baat kar rahe hain aur jainism mujhe to pura post modernism mein lagta hai anyway aap sirf 5 minute hain to main aap logo ko jainism ke teen char mahatvapurna mudde bataungi ya ayam bataungi ek to ye ki jainism bhagwan pe vishwas nahi karta jainism bolta hai ki ek shakti punj hai हमारी एनर्जी और हम अपने अब ये एक व्यक्तिवादी रिलीजन है ये बोलता है कि आपको अपने ऊपर कंट्रोल करना होगा आपको अपना खुद का मार्ग खुद अपनी जिम्मेदारी से और अपने डिसिप्लिन से चुनना होगा और उस पर अग्रसर होना होगा आपकी जिम्मेदारी आपके ऊपर है आपके कर्मों की जिम्मेदारी आप किसी और को नहीं दे सकते अगर आप किसी मॉब में जा रहे हैं तो वो आपकी जिम्मेदारी है वो आपका कर्म होगा तो जैनिज्म में हमारे जो तीर्थंकर हैं उन्होंने जो केवल ज्ञान और निर्वाण की प्राप्ति करी है तीर्थंकर मीन्स प्रॉफिट्स उन्होंने जो ये प्राप्ति करी है वो भी अपने कर्मों से अपने ज्ञान से अपनी समझ से की है जैनिज्म बहुत व्यक्तिवादी रिलीजन है और ये बोलता है कि अगर आपकी माँ बाप आपकी वाइफ आपके लिए कितना भी करवा चौथ व्रत रख लें आपको अपने कर्मों को खुद ही भुगतना होगा तो आप ऐसे ही कर्म करो जो आपको कम से कम भुगतने पड़े 
जर्नलिज्म ये बोलते हैं मेरे हिसाब से और बहुत ही सिंपल वर्ड में बोलने के हिसाब से दूसरी चीज़ जो जर्नलिज्म बोलती है और जो मुझे लगता है कि पीसफुल को एग्जिस्टेंस के लिए बहुत बहुत ज़रूरी है वो ये कि जर्नलिज्म में कोई सोशल कोड ऑफ कंडक्ट नहीं है स्वामी जी लोगों के लिए है ले मैन के लिए श्राव के लिए भी ठीक है पर ले मैन के लिए कोई कोड ऑफ कंडक्ट नहीं है जैसा देश वैसा भेष आप गुजरात में हो आप गुजरातियों की तरह रहो आप बंगाल में हो आप बंगालियों की तरह रहो आप उनकी तरह शादी करो आप उनकी तरह सारे रीति रिवाज को फॉलो करो इससे जो एक सबसे बड़ा फ़ायदा जैनों को होता है वो ये कि जो एक इंटॉलरेंस ऑफ डिफरेंस होता है जो फिज़िकल अपीयरेंस के थ्रू आता है आप में साड़ी पहनी है आपको ऑस्ट्रेलिया के स्कूल में एंट्रेंस नहीं मिलेगी आप में बुरका पहना है आपको इंडिया के स्कूल और कॉलेज में एंट्रेंस नहीं मिलेगा ये सब चीज़ें जैनों को नहीं फेस करनी पड़ती क्योंकि वो फिज़िकल डिफरेंस उनको उनको बाधा नहीं देता एक एक ट्रस्ट पैदा हो जाता है ये तो हमारे जैसे ही लोग हैं ये तो हम ही जैसे हैं हाँ डिफरेंस है हम लोग अमर जैन बहुत ज़्यादा वेजिटेरियन हैं और उनके अपने रूल्स हैं उनके अपनी फिलॉसफी है पर वो आम जीवन में बाधा बन के बहुत कम देखी गई और मैंने रिसर्च बॉम्बे में भी की है मैंने कैलकाटा में भी की है अब फुली मैं बेंगलोर में जाके भी करूँगी और मैंने हर जगह देखा है कि जैन्स हैव एडजस्टेड वेरी वेल विद द लोकल कल्चर जैसे वो बता रहे थे बोला जाता है कि लोकल कल्चर के संग्रह तीसरी चीज़ जो स्वामी जी ने भी बताई हमारी फिलॉसफी अनेकांतवाद अनेकांतवाद को सिर्फ अनेकांतवाद के संग नहीं पढ़ा जाता इसके तीन आयाम हैं अनेकांतवाद सियादवाद और न्यास अनेकांतवाद बोलता है कि रियलिटी का मल्टी डायमेंशन है इट टॉक्स अबाउट द फैक्ट दैट देर इज द एक रियलिटी दैट वी गेट एक्सपोज टू जो रियलिटी को हम देखते हैं वो हम अपने डिपार्चर पॉइंट और अपने लिमिटेड संसाधनों के कारण देखते हैं उसका इंटरप्रिटेशन भी हम अपने डिपार्चर पॉइंट और अपने संसाधनों के कारण करते हैं और वो पूरी रियलिटी नहीं है इसलिए किसी भी चीज़ में बहुत डट के बहुत फिक्सड हो के बहुत रिजिड हो के ओपिनियन मत बनाओ दूसरा आदमी भी सही हो सकता है क्योंकि वो दूसरे रियलिटी के दूसरे पहलू से एक्सपोज हुआ है हम लोगों के एक बहुत इंटरेस्टिंग कहानी है हाथी की अगर आप हाथ सात अंधे थे एक ने हाथी की सूंड को छुआ उसने कहा अरे वाह हाथी तो बहुत ही सॉफ्ट सॉफ्ट पतला पतला है एक ने हाथी के टस को छुआ दांतों को और उसने कहा हाथी तो बहुत हार्ड है देखो कितना कठिन है आपको जो आस्पेक्ट से आप एक्सपोज हो रहे हैं आपको वही सच लगता है पर आपको हमेशा मानना होगा कि वो पूरा सच नहीं है उसमें आपका कल्चर आप कैसे इंटरप्रेट कर रहे हो ये सब चीज़ें बहुत ज़्यादा मान्यता रखती है ये ये जर्नलिज्म का एक बहुत इम्पॉर्टेंट एस्पेक्ट है आई वुड लव टू टेल यू ऑल अबाउट द कॉन्टेक्चुअलाइजेशन ऑफ इंटरप्रिटेशन विच कम्स विथ सियादवाद एंड हमारा खुद का जजमेंट और स्टैंड पॉइंट विच कम्स विद न्यास वो बोलता है न्यास बोलता है कि हम लोग एक कोई चीज लेते हैं उसको हम लोग अपने कल्चर और अपने अपने पास हिस्ट्री के हिसाब से इंटरप्रेट करते हैं अब एक पानी रखने की चीज है उसको कोई बोलता है जग और उसमें फ्लावर्स रख दो तो वही बन जाता है फ्लावर वास अब ये आप पे डिपेंड करता है कि आप उसको जग की तरह ले रहे हो या फ्लावर वास की तरह अगर कोई आके आपको कुछ बोल रहा है तो आप उसको नेगेटिव लोगे कि पॉजिटिव ये आप पे डिपेंड करता है और आप कितना ज़्यादा सच्चाई को जानते हो उस पर डिपेंड करता है तो जैनिज़म ये भी एक बात बोलता है और सबसे बड़ी चीज़ कि ये सब चीज़ें जो जैनिज़म के मैंने सिर्फ थोड़ा थोड़ा सा छुआ है मुद्दों को और ये जो चीज़ें हैं जैनिज़म की ये एक टॉलरेंस बढ़ाती हो गया हो गया हो गया हम अबाउट टू फिनिश ये जो है चीज़ें वो एक हमारे अंदर टॉलरेंस बढ़ाती हैं टॉलरेंस फॉर फॉर डिफरेंस एंड टॉलरेंस टू टेक थिंग्स एम्पैथेटिकली आप भी सही हो हम भी सही हैं मिल बैठ के बात करते और देखते हैं कि क्या हम सच्चाई के दो पहलुओं को तीन पहलुओं को समझ सकते हैं थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू प्रोफेसर
थैंक यू प्रोफेसर रानू जैन इन्होंने तीन बहुत महत्वपूर्ण बातें बताई जो जैन ने सम सिखाता है कि एक तो जो आपकी रियलिटी है वो दूसरों की रियलिटी नहीं हो सकती है क्योंकि आप उसको अलग पहलू से देख रहे हैं दूसरा उन्होंने बताया कि बहुत ज़रूरी है कि आप उसको एक कॉन्टेक्स्ट में देखें ये दो बातें बहुत ही बहुत महत्वपूर्ण है और बहुत सारे फसाद जो है वो अपना वर्चस्व दिखाने के लिए होते हैं अपनी बात को सही ठहराने के लिए होते हैं तो इसके बाद इस इस थॉट को आगे लेते हुए मैं बुलाना चाहूँगी डॉक्टर सलीम खान डॉक्टर सलीम खान जमात इस्लामी के वाइस प्रेसिडेंट हैं सर आपके पास पाँच मिनट आधा वर्ष है मैं एक ज़माने में था जमात इस्लामी का वाइस प्रेसिडेंट अभी नहीं हूँ तो ये इनको नहीं पता थोड़ा अपडेट करना पड़ेगा एक शेर मैं पहले सुनाना चाहता हूँ क्योंकि शायरी में बात बहुत आसान हो जाती है चमन में इख्तलाते रंगों बू से बात बनती है ज़रा मुश्किल है ये मिसरा लेकिन दूसरा आसान कर देगा हम ही हम हैं तो क्या हम हैं तुम ही तुम हो तो क्या तुम हो आ, अभी रानू जहन बहन बोल रही थी कि मजहब में लड़ाई झगड़ा नहीं है सियासत में है और उससे पहले श्वेता तांबे साहब ने भी कानोड़िया का जिक्र कर दिया था तो बहुत सारी आइडियोलॉजिकल बातें हो गई तो मैं एक दो पहले प्रैक्टिकल बात करूंगा देखिए कानोड़िया का मामला है ये बहुत इंटरेस्टिंग है इसको हम लोग इसकी ये इसकी एग्जांपल से समझ सकते हैं कि कैसी इरेशनल चीज़ें समाज में जो है वो लोगों को दूर करने के लिए की जाती हैं अब एक आम है जो एक मुसलमान के बाग में उसने बीज लगाया उसके बाद उसको खाद दिया उसके बाद बड़ा किया उसके बाद उसको तोड़ा उसके बाद पैकिंग किया बाज़ार में ले जा बेचा अब वो आम जो है वो कानोड़िया के रास्ते में एक हिंदू बेच रहा है तो वो पवित्र आम है हालांकि वो बेचारा आम जो है वो उस ठेले वाले के पास घंटे था लेकिन उस बाग वाले के पास दो चार साल था इसी तरह से एक किसान है वो अपने अनाज उगाता है मेहनत करता है वो हिंदू है और वो बाज़ार में ला के उसको बेचता है एक मुसलमान उससे वो अनाज ख़रीदता है अपनी दुकान में रखता है बेचने के लिए तो अगर किसी कानोड़िया ने उसको ख़रीद लिया तो वो जो है वो नापाक हो गया तो इस तरह की इरेशनल बातें आ, सरकारी सतह पर होती हैं जिसकी वजह से लोगों के लिए मुश्किल होता है अब ये जो मैं अभी हमारे स्वामी जी चले गए उन्होंने कश्मीर का जिक्र किया तो मुझको याद आया कि अगर यही सर्कुलर अमरनाथ यात्रा के लिए निकाल दिया जाए तो अमरनाथ यात्रा बंद हो जाएगी इसलिए कि वैली में जाने के बाद काम ही ख़त्म है और ये मसला सिर्फ हिंदू मुसलमान का नहीं है या हिंदू ईसाई या हिंदू सिखों का भी नहीं है आपको याद होगा अभी अभी अयोध्या में जब इलेक्शन के रिजल्ट्स आए आप लोग जो एक्स देखते होंगे तो उसमें ये हुआ कि लोग अयोध्या जाएं अयोध्या वालों ने बहुत बुरा सलूक किया है आप अपने खाने पीने का सामान पूजा पाठ का सामान अपने साथ लेके जाएं ताकि उन लोगों का फ़ायदा ना हो जिन्होंने हमारे खिलाफ वोट दिया है तो वो तो मुसलमान नहीं है लेकिन यह कि चूँकि हमारे खिलाफ वोट दे दिया तो फिर उनको कोई फ़ायदा नहीं पहुँचाना चाहिए और केजरीवाल से अगर कोई आर्ग्यूमेंट बहुत ज़्यादा बढ़ जाता है तो ये कह दिया जाता है कि ये तो खालिस्तानी है तो किसी को भी कुछ भी कह के आप जो है वो लोग अपने से दूर कर सकते हो लेकिन अगर सच्चाई लोगों के सामने सही तरीके से आए जैसा कि अभी स्वामी जी ने कहा कि हम हर महीने में एक दिन इस काम के लिए डेडिकेट करेंगे 
कि लोगों के बीच में जो मिसअंडरस्टैंडिंग्स है वो दूर हो और लोगों के अंदर जो प्रेम भावना है वो पैदा हो तो मैं समझता हूँ कि ये चीज़ें असल में इसीलिए पिनअप रही हैं कि कोई इसका काउंटर नेरेटिव नहीं आता तांबे जी बहुत परेशान थी तो काउंटर नेरेटिव इन लोगों की तरफ से आएगा तो फिर लोगों की जो मन मिटाव लोगों का जो दूरियां हैं वो कम होंगी अभी इस्लाम के बारे में निखत बहन ने बहुत कुछ बता दिया देखिए पीसफुल को एग्जिस्टेंस की जब बात होती है तो इस्लाम एक अरबिक वर्ड है और उसकी अगर आप मीनिंग देखें डिक्शनरी में तो आपको दो मीनिंग मिलेगी एक मीनिंग तो है ओबीडियंस यानी यह कि खुदा के सामने इंसान पूरी तरह से ओबीडियंट हो जाए उसकी मर्जी को के मुताबिक अपनी ज़िंदगी गुजारे और दूसरा मीनिंग पीस है यानी मैं इसलिए नहीं बोल रहा हूँ कि इस प्रोग्राम में आया हूँ ये डिक्शनरी बहुत पहले लिखी गई थी इस प्रोग्राम से तो उस वक्त भी उसका मीनिंग पीस ही लिखा हुआ था तो आ, तो ये जो चीज़ है ना पीस ये कोई ऐसी चीज़ नहीं है कि भाई अगर जंग ना हो अगर वायलेंस ना हो तो पीस है ऐसा नहीं है पीस असल में इंसान के नेचर में देखिए हम खुद पीसफुल रहना चाहते हैं जब हमारे अंदर का पीस डिस्टर्ब हो जाता है तो हम परेशान होते हैं और दूसरों को भी परेशान करते हैं तो हर इंसान अपने लिए पीस चाहता है लेकिन अगर वो दूसरों के लिए भी पीस चाहने लगे वो ये सोचे कि जो मुझको पसंद है वो सबको पसंद है क्योंकि हम सब इंसान हैं और हमारे सबकी जो आत्मा की बात हो रही थी हमारी सबकी आत्मा जो है आप बता रहे थे एक ही चीज़ मांगती है और इसका हमको इंतज़ाम करना चाहिए इसका रिस्पेक्ट करना चाहिए इसको आम करना चाहिए तो मैं समझता हूँ कि पीसफुल को हो सकेगा यानी इसको जो है वो कोई ज़रूरत की बात नहीं है कि हम चूँकि समाज में तनाव है इसलिए पीस बल्कि पीस जो है वो हमारे नेचर के मुताबिक ज़िंदगी गुजारना है और इस लिहाज से इसको इम्पोर्टेंस देना चाहिए इस्लाम की बात चूँकि यहाँ पर सभी लोग अपने अपने धर्मों के बारे में बता रहे हैं तो इस्लाम में एक वर्ष है जो अक्सर कही जाती है कि पीस डिस्टर्ब उस वक्त होता है जब इनटॉलरेंस आता है तो इस्लाम में ये बात कही गई है बहुत साफ तौर से कि रिलीजन के बारे में कोई कंपल्शन नहीं है आप किसी को ज़बरदस्ती करके अपने रिलीजन में नहीं ला सकते और सच्चाई और जो बुराई है वो अलग अलग करके रखी गई है अब ये है कि इंसान जो है वो फैसला करता है कि उसको किस रास्ते पे चलना चाहिए और जब वो सच्चाई के रास्ते पे चलना चलने की कोशिश करता है तो खुदा उसकी मदद करता है उसके लिए राहें आसान करता है तो ये बेसिक प्रिंसिपल है कि हम जो है वो किसी पर अपना मजहब थोपेंगे नहीं इस बारे में कोई कंपल्शन नहीं करेंगे तो मैं समझता हूँ कि बहुत सारा कोई एग्जिस्टेंस का एक बेसिक बुनियाद बन जाती है उसके अलावा कुरान मजीद में ये बात कही गई है अल्लाह इनवाइट्स टू द होम ऑफ पीस एंड गाइड्स होम एवर ही विल टू स्ट्रेट पाथ एक बात और भी ये है कि जो लोग अमन के साथ रहना चाहते हैं तो उनको जो है वो खुदा पसंद करता है उनसे मोहब्बत करता है और एक बात और है कि अगर किसी के साथ कोई ज्यादती हुई है तो उसके जवाब में जो तालीम दी गई है कुरान में वो पहली तो ये है कि अगर वो बदला लेना चाहता है तो बराबर का बदला ले सकता है वो हद से नहीं गुजर सकता यानी जितनी ज्यादती हुई है उतना बदला वो ले सकता है उसी वर्ष में उसी आयत में ये बात भी कही गई है कि लेकिन अगर वो माफ़ कर दे तो ये उससे अच्छा है और अगर आप प्रॉफिट की सेइंग्स को देखें तो उसमें ये बात होती है कि एक तो ये है कि आपने बराबर का बदला ले लिया आप उससे आगे नहीं बढ़े दूसरा ये है कि आपने उसको माफ़ कर दिया 
और तीसरा ये कि आपने उससे एहसान किया यानी उसके साथ अच्छा मामला किया तो एक सेइंग ये भी है प्रॉफिट की कि अगर कोई आपके साथ भलाई करे तो आप उसके साथ भलाई करें लेकिन अगर कोई आपके साथ बुराई करे तो आप उसके साथ बुराई नहीं कर सकते तो ये इस बात की इजाज़त नहीं है आप उसके साथ ये कर सकते हैं कि बराबरी का मामला यानी कई बार जो है वो आपको जुल्म से रोकने के लिए उसको सज़ा देनी पड़ती है जितनी सज़ा कानून के मुताबिक है उतनी सज़ा डिटरेंट के तौर पे कई बार जो है वो एक मिनट कई बार जो है वो आपको माफ़ करना पड़ता है और कई बार उसको उसके दिल को नर्म करने के लिए उसको सही बात समझाने के लिए आपको उस बुराई के जवाब में उसके साथ एहसान का मामला अच्छा मामला करना पड़ता है और ये कोई थियरेटिकल बात नहीं है ऐसा लोग करते रहे हैं आज भी करते हैं तो मैं समझता हूँ कि अगर ये चीज़ें हमारे सामने रहें ये तालीमत हमारे सामने रहें और हम इन पर सेल्फलेस मतलब ये कि किसी फ़ायदे के लिए नहीं कि मैं ऐसा करूँगा तो ये ऐसा करेगा नहीं बल्कि ये कि ये जो है वो मेरे खुदा का हुक्म है और मैं उसको खुश करने के लिए इस पर अमल, अमल करता हूँ और कोई वो करे या ना करे मैं किसी के साथ भला करूं तो वो भला करे या बुरा करे मैं भलाई करता रहूंगा अगर ये सोच समाज में पिनपती है तो समाज में को एग्जिस्टेंस हो सकता है बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया थैंक यू डॉक्टर सलीम डॉक्टर सलीम ने बहुत सारी बातें ऐसे कही जो इस्लाम में कही गई है और जो पीसफुल को एग्जिस्टेंस के बारे में कहती है उस, क, वो बताती हैं इसमें से जो आखिरी बात उन्होंने कही कि कोई आपके साथ अच्छा करे तो आपने अच्छा करना चाहिए कोई आपके साथ बुरा करे तो भी आपने उसके साथ अच्छा करना चाहिए और आई टेक दिस फ्रॉम वॉट ही सेड एंड टेकिंग दिस थाट अहेड आई वुड नॉट लाइक टू इन्वाइट सिस्टर सगाया मैरी सिस्टर सगाया इज़ अ प्रैक्टिसिंग लॉयर शी इज़ एक्टिव इन कंसर्न सिटीजन्स ग्रुप फॉर बिल्डिंग पीस अमंग कम्यूनिटीज brothers and sisters and esteemed religious leaders and fellow seekers of truth we all of us are seekers of truth and in the context of christianity building bridges embracing peace love justice across our faith as we are here today we find ourselves at the crossroad a sacred connection where our diverse paths meet our faith tradition may vary our faith tradition may vary but our shared humanity unites us today all of us embark and a journey of dialogue a journey that transcends dogmas or rituals reaching into the depth of our hearts as i said to you all the context of christianity the value of peace love justice humanity and brotherhood this is the nucleus of christianity peace peace is not a private state just now he explained about the peace it is an active pursuit in the quiet chambers of our soul we own for peace for the serenity that soothes the restless spirit as christians we draw inspiration from jesus Jesus is a prince of peace when he resurrected he appeared to the disciples and he said peace be with you and he lived for the peace and let us extend our hands across the divides us across our altars in the church masks and the temples let our conversation be bridge over the troubled waters true 
true peace begins when we recognize the divine spark within us the another value the nucleus of christianity is love god is love and that this language everybody understands and in the bible it says you know you can have all the knowledge all the understanding you can have all the talent everything but if you don't have love you are noisy gong so love is the nucleus of christianity and justice justice is a heartbeat of our society our faith compels us to seek justice to stand alongside the oppressed in the bible the prophets whenever there is oppression they spoke for just justice and you and me we are here let us be advocate for the voiceless it is the embodiment of love in action then human dignity genesis father michael was telling genesis chapter 1 verse 21 god created human being in his image and likeness and we all are are the children of god and we bow in prayer and kneel down in prayer or meditate in silence we affirm the sacredness of life that protects the vulnerable the refuge we see migrants and the children vulnerable children and when we honor the dignity of these people we all of us honor god brotherhood we all of us of siblings of this spinning planet and this cosmic family when we recognize the divine image in one another we become true brothers and sisters our difference enriches our understanding of the divine within us as a conclusion we say that make me a channel of your peace where there is hatred let me bring your love where there is despair in life let me bring hope where there is darkness only light and where there is sadness ever joy together we form symphony of faith let us be an ambassador of hope thank you thank you sister sagaya i know everybody is feeling restless but we only have two speakers and then the summing up so uh, i would now like to call uh, masharat ahmed uh, he is from the ahmadiyya community and he is one of the leaders of the ahmadiyya community so you have Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim In the name of Allah the gracious the ever merciful all distinguished guests assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Peace and blessings of Allah be upon you before i speak first of all i would like to thank the organizers organizers of this event interreligious solidarity council mumbai mr irfan sir and his team stanley sir father sm michael and the whole team of irsc they all have put lots of effort to bring each one of us on this platform thank you so much and big round of applause for the entire team <clears throat> today's topic peaceful coexist in multicultural society this is the hour of need well myself masarat ahmed from ahmadiyya muslim community mumbai Ahmadiyya Muslim community is dedicated to establish peace and to protect the basic human rights of all wherever they may be in the world and is also keen to recognize efforts made by those who seek to advance the cause of peace we also host peace symposium throughout the world under the leadership leadership of his holiness hazrat mirza masrur ahmed spiritual worldwide head of ahmadiyya muslim community our community motto is love for all hatred for none 
Actually, we promote the motto throughout the world. Well, I come to the today's topic. My sister in uh, Islam and Salim Khan Sahib I spoke to uh, on Islam how to integrate in co peaceful coexistence in multi uh, multicultural society. I will value add to that. The cities, towns, states and countries at large continue to be in dire need of an effective solution where the followers of every religion can coexist in peaceful society. I will now, I will take you to the charter of uh, Medina which was constituted by the Holy Prophet some 1400 years ago offers us an already tested and successful blueprint for establishing peace, coexistence in the multi-faith society. When the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, migrated from Medina to Mecca to Medina to escape their endless persecution, the aim was to establish an administration in Medina that would be accepted by all parties and bring an end to the violence. After the migration, the Holy Prophet emerged as the obvious candidate for the leadership role and was unanimously accepted as the leader of Medina. With this new responsibility, the Messenger of Allah was tasked with finding a practical solution to establish peace and harmony in Medina's widely diverse and multi faith society. To achieve this, he drafted a charter that guaranteed the safety of all citizens regardless of their religion and brought an end to internal conflicts. One of the more silent points of this charter is the recognition of all people as one community to the exclusion of all human beings, which is included at the very beginning of the charter, acts as an outline for the underlying message of the treaty. It marks the establishment of the new, new Republic of Medina and new found unity between tribes. Religious freedom was essential to the charter as tensions were bound to resurface without it. After establishing internal administrative rules in relation to the Muslims, attention was turned to the Jews. The charter guaranteed that the Jews would have the same right to practice their religion as the Muslims did because the Jews have their religion and the Muslims have their. However, it should be borne in mind that basis of this charter was the Holy Quran and its perfect teachings which were continuously being revealed to the Holy Prophet The success of this treaty is largely attributed to this as the articles of the treaty are not merely man-made but rather derived from divine teachings. The underlining message of the charter is reflected in the following verse of the Holy Quran. O mankind, we have created you from a male and female and we have made you into tribes and sub-tribes that you have recognized one another. Verily, the most honorable among you in the sight of Allah is he who is the most righteous among you. Surely, Allah is all-knowing, all-aware. Surah Al-Hujrat, chapter 49, verse 14. The Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, was elected as the head of the state and under his leadership, the covenant proved to be a magnificent charter of human rights and governors and in ensured peace between the different communities. For example, on one occasion, an affluent lady committed a crime and many people suggested that, given her high standing in society, it is better to turn a blind eye to her crimes. The Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, rejected their advice and made it clear that even if his daughter committed an offense, she too would be subject to the law and no favoritism or nepotism would occur. The reality is that Prophet of Islam, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, spent every moment of his life championing the rights of people. And though the teaching of Islam, he established an incomparable and timeless charter of human rights. For example, he taught that people should respect the belief and feelings of one another. They should abstain from criticizing what others held scared. Once a Jewish person came to him and complained about the conduct of one of his closest companion, the Prophet of Islam, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, summoned him and asked what had transpired. He said that the Jew had claimed that Moses, peace be upon him, was superior in rank to the Prophet of Islam, 
peace and blessings of allah be upon him and he could not tolerate this he had strongly repudiated it and said the holy prophet islam blessings of peace be upon him upon this holy prophet give me one minute upon this the holy prophet muhammad peace and blessings of allah be upon him expressed his displeasure with this closest confidence and said that he should not have argued with the jew and should instead have respected his religious sentiments these were his peerless teachings and in my view it is deeply regretted that the principle of mutual respect which is means of establishing love and unity has been sacrificed in modern world in the name of so called freedom and the name of entertainment well it was an outstanding example of successful integration and a manifestation of a peace and tolerant multicultural society the treaty of madina was based directly upon the teachings of holy quran for chapter uh, for example chapter 16 was 91 of the holy quran states verily allah enjoins justice and the doing of good to others and giving the mankind thus the holy quran was the outline three levels of engagement with other people and other communities the first and minimum level is of justice verify whereby the holy quran advocates the need to treat everyone fairly and equi- and equitably the standard of justice required by islam are outlined in chapter 4 verse 136 of the holy quran which states o ye who believe be strict in observing justice and be witness for allah even though it be against yourself or against parents and kindred whether he be rich or poor allah is most grateful to them both than you are well i have very short of time let me conclude <coughs> with these few words i would like to conclude with below prayers it is my heartfelt prayer that may allah the almighty enable true peace to emerge and may the long shadows of war and conflict that hover above us be replaced by blue skies of peace and prosperity i pray for an end to the frustration deprivation that have plagued the lives of countless people and have filled devastating wars and grievances across the world i pray that we come to see the best in humanity and use and use each other strengths and skills to build a better world for our children and to cultivate lasting peace in society surely the alternates do not bear thinking about it may god the almighty enable us to do so amen with these words i would like to thank you all patiently listening to me thank you so much i would like to introduce a book which is a world crisis and path to peace this book is a compilation of the worldwide head of the amdi muslim community who has visited the whole world of parliaments and given a speech on how to establish peace harmony and injustice and how to tol- tolerance and the, all the speech has been compiled in the book of form of world crisis and path to peace the book is kept on the table if you wish to this is for free distribution you can take it thank you so much and now the last speaker uh, professor ram punyani uh, ram punyani works for communal harmony he is the president of center for study of society and secularism priya priya dosto <coughs> pehle to main uh, ayojakon ko dhanyawad de dunga us karan ke liye jiske karan ke liye sabne diya hai मेरा कारण कुछ और है मेरा कारण है कि उन्होंने मुझे आखिर में रखा तो उसका फ़ायदा क्या है कि मैं सब धर्मों का सार समझ सका और मेरी कोशिश ये थी कि ये जो अलग अलग धर्मों के बारे में इतनी अच्छी बातें बताई जा रही हैं उसका निचोड़ कैसे निकालूँ वॉट इज़ द इजेंस ऑफ रिलीजन्स एज सच तो उसमें मुझे ज़्यादा तकलीफ़ नहीं हुई क्योंकि संत कबीर का एक दोहा आपने सुना होगा पोथी पढ़ पढ़ जगमुआ पंडित भया न कोए ढाई आखर प्रेम के पढ़े सो पंडित होए तो मैंने आप सब के जो महत्वपूर्ण अपने धर्म के बारे में आपने बताया उसमें से मैं ये शिक्षा लेता हूँ कि धर्म हमें मानवता से प्रेम करना सिखाता है और यही बात हमारे महाराष्ट्र में एक बात बहुत अच्छी है हमारे महाराष्ट्र में बहुत बड़े बड़े थिंकर्स हो गए हैं आपको याद होगा हमारे यहाँ एक साने गुरुजी थे याद है उनकी एक प्रार्थना थी अभी भी स्कूल में पढ़ाई जाती है मेरे ख्याल से कौन सी है वो खरा तो एक अच्छी धर्म जगाला प्रेम अर पावे यानी वही एक धर्म सच्चा है जो मानवता से प्रेम सिखाता है अब इसके आगे जहाँ तक सवाल है 
कि आज हमें इस प्रकार की मीटिंग्स करने की जरूरत क्यों पड़ रही है भारत में सदियों से लोग एक दूसरे के साथ प्रेम मोहब्बत से रहते आए हैं और मैं जवाहरलाल नेहरू की किताब डिस्कवरी ऑफ इंडिया का एक छोटा सा वाक्य बताऊंगा कि भारत एक ऐसे महान स्लेट की तरह है जिसमें अलग अलग सभ्यताएं संस्कृतियां धर्म आई एक के ऊपर एक एक के बाद एक आती रही और नई वाली संस्कृति धर्म ने पुराने को नष्ट नहीं किया पुराने की अच्छी चीज़ें और नई बातें उसमें जुड़ती गई डिस्कवरी ऑफ इंडिया जो आप शाम बिनेगल के सीरियल में आपने जरूर देखना चाहिए दूसरा मुझे यही लगता है कि भारत में आज धर्म को देखने का जो तरीका है उसमें सबसे महत्वपूर्ण जो मुझे व्यक्ति दिखते हैं वो है मोहनदास करमचंद गांधी अब वो वैसे तो मैं कंपैरिजन भी मेरे जो गुरु थे असगर अली इंजीनियर साहब उन्होंने बहुत अच्छा एक कंपेरिज़न किया था महात्मा गांधी मौलाना अबुल कलाम आज़ाद तो मैं जरा आपसे पूछता हूँ मौलाना आज़ाद साहब के बारे में इस्लाम के बारे में तो कहा गया है तो जो बात एक रान प्रोफेसर रानू जैन ने बताई और सलीम साहब ने बताया तो थोड़ा सा मैं विस्तार करूँगा ये दो का एक उदाहरण देने के लिए तो मैं आपसे पूछना चाहता हूँ मौलाना अबुल कलाम आज़ाद ये मुसलमान थे या नहीं थे सरल सवाल है इसलिए आप जवाब नहीं दे रहे मुझे पता है कठिन सवालों का जवाब सब देते हैं मुसलमान थे पर क्या उन्होंने कभी मुस्लिम लीग का समर्थन किया नहीं किया अब वो मैं एक इंटरव्यू के फॉर्म में रखता हूँ कि मैं मौलाना साहब से इंटरव्यू लेता हूँ काल्पनिक एच जी वेल्स की टाइम मशीन के हिसाब से मौलाना साहब से पूछता हूँ मौलाना साहब आप तो इतने अच्छे मुसलमान हैं आप पाकिस्तान की बात क्यों नहीं करते मुस्लिम लीग की बात क्यों नहीं करते तो मौलाना साहब मुझे जवाब देंगे बरखुरदार मेरा इस्लाम तो इंसान से इंसान को जोड़ने की बात करता है और ये जो नफरत की बात की जा रही है मैं उसके साथ नहीं हूँ ऐसे इंटरव्यू में महात्मा गांधी से लेता हूँ बापू को पूछता हूँ बापू आप हिंदू हैं कि नहीं बापू कहते हैं मैं हिंदू हूँ और मेरा हिंदू धर्म वो है जो दूसरे धर्मों की अच्छी चीज़ों को स्वीकार करता है गांधी की बायोग्राफी देखिए कैसे वो इस्लाम के बारे में अच्छा कहते हैं क्रिश्चियनिटी के बारे में अच्छा कहते हैं जुडाइज़म को अच्छा कहते हैं और ये कहते हैं सब भारतीय धर्म है अब ये हालात जो पिछले दुनिया में खड़े हुए हैं धर्म के नाम पर झगड़े हो रहे वगैरह वगैरह वास्तव में फिर से मैं प्रोफेसर रानू जैन और सलीम साहब को धन्यवाद देते कहूँगा ये धर्म के कारण नहीं है इस दुनिया में फैली हुई हिंसा वो आतंकवाद के नाम पे हो सांप्रदायिकता के नाम हो धर्म उसका उसका कोई लेना देना नहीं है राजनीति के कुछ लोग कुछ लोग या तो दुनिया के तेल के कब्जे पर जमाने के लिए आतंकवाद खड़ा कर रहे हैं या भारत में कुछ लोग भारत को पीछे ढकेलने के लिए मूल्यों के हिसाब से पीछे ढकेलने के लिए हिंदू धर्म की भावनाओं भावनाओं को मूल्यों को नहीं जहाँ तक हिंदू धर्म के मैं मूल्य देखता हूँ तो हिंदू धर्म के मूल्यों में भी मुझे महानता देती है देखती है आप तो काफ़ी प्रबुद्ध लोग हैं फिर भी मैं स्कूल कॉलेज में कई बार बात करता हूँ तो तीन मूल्य मैं हमेशा अलग अलग धर्मों के बताता हूँ एक वसुधैव कुटुम्बकम हिंदू धर्म से आया क्या मतलब है इसका कि पूरी दुनिया मेरा परिवार है तो अगर मैं एक अच्छा हिंदू हूँ तो मैं किसी मुसलमान से या क्रिश्चियन से या सिख से नफरत कर सकता हूँ नहीं क्रिश्चियन धर्म उसके बारे में दूसरा एक एग्जाम्पल छोटा सा सीखा है मैंने लव दाई नेबर अब खैर इससे प्रॉब्लम होता है स्टूडेंट्स में बोले तो उसका अलग ही मतलब ले लेते हैं दैट डिफरेंट पर जनरली लव दाई नेबर एज दाई ओन सेल्फ अपने पड़ोसी से उतना ही प्यार करो आप जितना अपने आप से करते हो तीसरा फिर मैं उनको एक बताता हूँ मुझे एग्जैक्ट क्योंकि कुरान कभी मैंने उतना सीखा नहीं है आ, वो अगर आपका पड़ोसी भूखा है अगर आपका पड़ोसी भूखा है तो आपके लिए जन्नत के दरवाजे कभी नहीं खुलेंगे अब ये तीनों नैतिक मूल्यों में क्या संघर्ष है मुझे कभी नहीं दिखा और यही बात पिछले चालीस साल से जो दुनिया में हो रही है तो एक थीसिस किसी ने रखी क्लैश ऑफ सिविलाइजेशंस कि भाई दुनिया में जो चल रहा है सभ्यताओं का संघर्ष है धर्मों का संघर्ष है तो उसके जवाब में यूनाइटेड नेशंस के एक सेक्रेटरी जनरल थे कोफी अन्नान कोफी अन्नान ने एक हाई लेवल कमेटी बनाई और उसने एक रिपोर्ट बनाई पता नहीं वो रिपोर्ट पॉपुलर क्यों नहीं हुई उस रिपोर्ट का टाइटल है अभी भी वो वेबसाइट पर मौजूद है अलायंस ऑफ सिविलाइजेशंस क्या कहती है थी कि दुनिया में आज तक मानवता के मूल्यों की जो भी प्रगति हुई है दुनिया में आज तक मानवता के मूल्यों की जो भी प्रगति हुई है वो सभी सभ्यताओं सभी धर्मों के अच्छे पहलुओं के मेल जोल से हुई है ये बात 
अलायंस ऑफ सिविलाइजेशन की थीसिस कहती है जो मेरे ख्याल से आज के समय हमारे समाज में सबसे रेलिवेंट है धर्म के नाम पे नफरत फैलाना आसान है धर्म के नाम पे मोहब्बत फैलाना ये हमारे लिए चुनौती है धर्म जो मोहब्बत फैलाने के लिए है उसके नाम पे आज नफरत फैलाई जाती है खैर राजनीति से हम दूर नहीं रह सकते भले ही हम धर्मों की अच्छी अच्छी बातें करें मेरे दिमाग में यही है कि आप किसी भी धर्म को माने उस धर्म के नैतिक मूल्यों को आधार लेकर चलें जो झगड़े करवाए जाते हैं वो धर्म के पहचान के आधार पे होते हैं और तीसरा झगड़े होते नहीं हैं हिंसा होती नहीं है हिंसा करवाई जाती है और ये हिंसा करवाई जाती है मैंने कैसे सीखा वो अपनी वो थी ना कौन एम एच मिनिस्टर थी पहले वो सास भी बहू में भी काम करती थी स्मृति ईरानी अब वो उसको मिनिस्टर बना दिया एम एच का तो लोगों ने बोला अरे ये तो कितनी कम पढ़ी लिखी है तो बहुत नाराज़ हो गई थिएट्रिकल स्टाइल में बोली मुझे कम पढ़ा लिखा बोलते हो देखो मैं येल यूनिवर्सिटी से डिग्री लाई हूँ मैं बहुत इम्प्रेस हो गया येल यूनिवर्सिटी का रिसर्च फॉलो करने लग गया येल यूनिवर्सिटी का एक रिसर्च आया जहाँ भी दंगे करवाए जाते हैं उसके पीछे एक राजनीतिक मकसद होता है तो मेरा विश्वास कीजिए आज हम ये जो हमें मिलने की जरूरत इसलिए पड़ रही है कि धर्म का दुरुपयोग हो रहा है धर्म का सदुपयोग हो ये हमारी कोशिश होना चाहिए और धर्म का सदुपयोग होने के लिए मेरे पहले के दो तीन धार्मिक नेताओं ने बहुत अच्छी बात कही कि आज की ये जो मीटिंग है इसी प्रकार की मीटिंग्स बार बार हों इसमें मैं एक और जोड़ना चाहता हूँ कि हमारे सेंटर की तरफ से हमने कुछ पीस सेंटर चलाए हैं पीस सेंटर्स का उद्देश्य यही है कि लोगों में जो मानवता के मूल्य हैं अलग अलग धर्म के लोगों को जोड़ना इस जोड़ने के लिए आप अलग अलग प्रकार के सांस्कृतिक कार्यक्रम कर सकते हैं आजकल तो फिल्मों का ज़माना है डॉक्यूमेंट्री फिल्में वो भी मैं आपको थोड़ा इन्फॉर्मेशन दे दूँ कि जहाँ इतनी नफरत की चीज़ें फैलाई जा रही है उसी माहौल में इतने अच्छे अच्छे फिल्में अच्छी अच्छे यूट्यूब वीडियोज़ आ रहे हैं कि जो हम व्हाट्सएप के माध्यम से अब व्हाट्सएप का लोग दुरुपयोग भी कर रहे हैं कर रहे हैं हम अच्छा उसका सदुपयोग क्यों नहीं कर रहे हमारे पास भी तो मटेरियल है मुझे एक बहुत खुशी है कि इतने ख़राब माहौल में भी जो अच्छे अच्छा चीज़ों का निर्माण हो रहा है उसका हम उपयोग नहीं कर रहे मेरी पीड़ा यही है कि हमारे देश में शांति प्रिय लोगों की अपने धर्म के प्रति आदर रखने वाले लोगों की धर्म के मानवतावादी मूल्यों के आदर रखने वाले लोगों की कमी नहीं है समस्या कहाँ है हम बिखरे हुए हैं और जो मानवता का संदेश हम पहुंचा सकते हैं वो संदेश पहुंचाने में हमको और थोड़ी मेहनत करने की ज़रूरत है और ये जिम्मेदारी किसी और की नहीं है ये आखिरी पॉइंट मैं कहना चाहता हूँ ये जिम्मेदारी हम में से सब की है जो भी अपने धर्म के मानवता के मूल्यों में विश्वास रखते हैं सबकी जिम्मेदारी है कि हम मानवता के मूल्यों को फिल्मों के माध्यम से व्हाट्सएप के माध्यम से सोशल मीडिया के माध्यम से जो भी हमारे पास उपलब्ध हो उसके माध्यम से हम अपनी कम्युनिटी में इरफान इरफान ले जाने की कोशिश करें खुद तक वो टू डू द समिंग अप एंड गिव द वोट ऑफ थैंक्स फ्रेंड्स वॉट अ ब्यूटिफुल इवनिंग वी हैड वेरी ब्यूटिफुल टू थ्री थिंग्स सिंस वी हैड मैनी स्पीकरस फ्राम ऑल रिलीजन्स वी डिन गिव डिटेल्ड इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ ऑल बिकॉज ऑफ शॉर्टेज ऑफ टाइम बट ईच वन इज वेरी वेरी लर्नड इट कम्स विथ लॉट ऑफ विजडम and they introduce themselves and they introduce themselves through the talks through the message they gave us what are this message i learnt quite a lot this is my way of thanking by recalling some of the message that they gave one was religion meant anekant vad Uh, people see truths differently each one has its own his or her own path to reach the truth and that is anekantvad the same thing was expressed 
by the phrase ekam sat vipra bahuda vadanti professor ram punyani told the same thing by stating vasudev kutumbakam the spirit of vasudev kutumbakam swami ji mitai das told us that we are atma we are we are one with parmatma we are parmatma's atma the same thing was said by father michael that we are made in image and likeness of god i don't see much difference between these expressions language is different expressions are different but the essence is same and because we are in image and likeness of god we all are invested with dignity we need to respect each other's dignity salim khan sahab told us the same thing differently atma of parmatma a little bit differently by saying that we islam means submission to god that we have to submit to god that is we try to become that atma that we try to reach masarat sahab told us the same thing a bit differently same i see a lot of commonality even though expressions are different by quoting an ayat of quran that uh, those who are honored who, who one, uh, one who is honored most honored is one who is most righteous and most pious in his conduct in this life all these things are same the other message that i got through different religions is about diversity anekantvad of course as was expressed nikhat uh, nauman dr nikhat nauman told us uh, that god created diversity so that we know each other god could have created everybody of same color same race same tribe same nation but then we wouldn't know each other in order to know each other god created diversity uh, this was explained by zoroastrian faith by saying that how to deal with diversity milk sugar in the milk merge with uh, ranu professor ranu jain said that jaisa desh waisa bhesh it's it's the same message stated differently how to overcome this diversity good thoughts according to zoroastrian faith good thoughts good words and good deeds love one another was another message that everyone uh, we got the message of tyag and seva what are good thoughts good deeds tyag tyag of our self interest our selfishness money or acquisition of property or that cannot be one's purpose in life it has to be serve others father michael also said that how how does one serve god if people are thirsty god is thirsty jesus is thirsty thirsty tyag and seva uh, our purpose in life is to experience the ultimate reality to 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 be able to reach god why conflicts because we are we have prejudices we have racial attitudes towards each other and why so because we are ungodliness amongst us 
which we have to fight is that we become swarthy, selfish, bloodthirsty. We want privileges. We want status. And all this is counter to what actually religious text is. What one has to do, one, has, one should exalt oneself over, be exalted through good thoughts, good deeds, and uh, good words. Purify oneself. We have common humanity. Justice is one of the purpose. This is the message that we got uh, in this entire session. And I must say, uh, before I announce uh, some of the programs, that this is our fifth meeting. And we are growing in numbers. We are growing in people who are participating. We had to unfortunately restrict time to five minutes because we wanted to include many people and we got that response from different congregations, faith organizations, faith establishments. And then we didn't want only male voice from religions. We wanted even women's perspective. Uh, some could not come, unfortunately, uh, though they were called last minute, Milin Uike uh, from Buddhist faith uh, could not join us for various reasons. Sister Nirja from Brahma Kumari uh, could not join us again for uh, various reasons. And uh, Kuldeep Singh from Sikh faith, he also uh, could not join uh, last minute. But these are, this is the message. The final message that we carry today evening is dharam ka sadupyog kare. To, to live the values, ethical path of religion and not use religion as instrument of identity. To prevail over each other, to demand privileges. This is what causes conflict. Uh, one or two suggestions that came is that we meet once a month. I think uh, we should honorably carry this and all of us should participate in this once a month meeting that uh, as far as possible. Uh, we would highly endorse this and try to do this. Uh, one announcement that uh, I would like to make, two announcements. One is, uh, suggestion came from Swami Dayadipananji. He had been to Ladakh. 11th September 1893 was uh, the day Swami Vivekanand gave message to the world of tolerance. 11th September is coming. Should we organize a get together on 11th September to give that same message of Swami Vivekananda, all of us together. Swami Vivekananda gave this message in World Religions of Parliament. We could have our own religion of Parliament in Mumbai and give that, reiterate that same message. We need to remind the society and ourselves of the same message. If you all agree, then uh, we would go ahead and organize this with all your support and everybody. Do we, uh, do we all agree? Okay, thank you, thank you very much. This is something that we'll organize uh, together and we will need uh, your help, your support, your continued support. This is a movement, this is not an event. This is the fifth meeting, uh, Brother Stanley, Forgot to mention, we had uh, the fourth meeting in Anjuman Islam, uh, which was again, you know, it was growing and many more. And we are more than what we were in there. Each meeting, there are more and more people joining us. And uh, in earlier meetings, Baha'i faith was not there. Baha'i faith has become part of it, etc., etc. And we need to grow even more to live the ethics of our religion. Uh, one announcement or one information that I would 
uh, like to give a call upon you to participate uh, in that, if possible, is that 9th August is a day when, in 1942, Gandhiji and other leaders, freedom fighters, gave a call to Britishers, quit India. Britishers are no more there. But there's something colonizing our mind, hatred. So now we need to give hatred a call, Nafrato Bharat Chodo. That same call on 9th August. Quit India. Something has to quit India. And that is Nafrat, hatred. If we can gather at, uh, we are going to gather at August Kranti Maidan, where that call was given. There is a samadhi there. There is a monument there, a, a memorial there. We can all reassemble there on 9th August and give this call of Nafrato Bharat Chodo. Uh, we are, uh, uh, we will announce, uh, we will announce that, uh, that, that is, Tushar Gandhi and many others are uh, taking lead, many other civil society organizations are taking that lead and uh, bringing people together. From 9th August to 15th August, we'll have a camp when we had our independence. We'll, we are running a campaign of joining people, spreading the message of love, awareness of diversity, acceptance of diversity, etc., etc. Uh, with this, I will thank all those who taught this wonderful message this evening to us. I'll thank Swami Dayadipanandji, uh, Yogi Raj, Dr. Mangesh Da, uh, Salim Khan Sahab, Nikhat Noman, Masarat Ahmed, Swami Devendra Brahmachari, Ranu Jain, Father S.M. Michael, Sister Sagaya Mary, uh, Erwad Firdos Pauri, Karl Sahukar, Seema Endorwala, Ram Punyani, and all others, if I have left out somebody uh, who spoke and helped us assemble this beautiful message. I would like to thank Shweta Damle for conducting uh, and moderating this uh, session wonderfully and ensuring that we finish in time. Her bell was a terror, but it disciplined us. It taught us how to submit. The bell was God, to which one all of us had to submit for the moment, yeah, in, 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 this, in this room. So thank you, Shweta. Thank you, Father Michael and Institute of uh, Indian Culture for giving us this uh, hall. I thank uh, Brother Stanley and all others who helped us organize this. You know, there's a lot of work uh, that goes on uh, because what we see here is a organized, uh, disciplined uh, event. But a lot of work goes on behind this. And all those who worked, uh, Inter-Religious uh, Solidarity Council, uh, which works to bring, and many people work voluntarily. Actually, we all work voluntarily and spend money out of our own pockets. That is why there is a donation box there. A little bit contribution, whatever possible, by any one of you. It's, it's an encouragement to us carry on this good work. Uh, we don't feel discouraged if the box is empty. We don't feel discouraged uh, because we are inspired by religious ethics and the love. But uh, a little donation for, uh, for whomever possible, it helps us to take care of uh, certain things. For sale, there are some books that To, for anyone who's interested in reading those messages, uh, Seema Indorwala has kept some book uh, from Baha'i Faith, uh, Masarat, M uh, other publications also, and they are available free. But if you may not have time to read, then it can be better used by somebody else who is going to read. And there are some books, uh, that are prized uh, and all.
thank you all all the participants wonderful participants who came at 4:30 right in time enabled us to sharp start this session sharp at 5 and finish in time thank you all thanks thank you. just a minute uh, one more one more uh, this entire evening has been captured by neha dabhade in a statement which could go from this evening just one minute and uh, and after that although i have to rush because we have, we have to catch a train and go to kolhapur uh, i won't be there but if i can request all of you to collectively get yourself photographed especially with today's resource person in the front line uh, i mean it, it, it's a memory we will know that uh, these people uh, these many people came although i and neha uh, won't be there but if you still can get uh, because uh, our train is at 820 from dada so we have to rush so neha will read the statement this this two two minutes two two more minutes it's a very brief statement that captures the evening and that statement will go out to everybody i think there is a lot of wisdom that has uh, be you know emerged from this very very august uh, meeting and it's very difficult to kind of capture it in one statement so forgive me if i have not done complete justice but i have tried and uh, i i hope uh, I, leaving technicalities apart if i have you know mispronounce someone's name or anything i'll correct that but if the essence of the message and statement you feel is okay it will be circulated as an indoor statement by all the participants today so i'll very uh, quickly read it uh, please let me know if i have to read it a little more slowly i'll do that um okay the statement goes like this on july 20th 2024 the interreligious solidarity council in mumbai convened a significant and rich gathering of faith leaders and influencers from diverse religious communities This gathering reaffirmed a collective commitment to mutual respect, peaceful coexistence and inclusion within our religious and culturally rich society. The discussions held underscored the deep-rooted traditions and teachings of each religion, emphasizing values such as compassion, service and acceptance. Faith leaders from Hinduism, Islam, Christianity, Bahai tradition, Zoroastrianism, Jainism and rationalist perspective shared profound insights from theological and philosophical perspectives a common thread that emerged from these discussions was the universal values of oneness acceptance inclusion and non discrimination underscored by all religions towards the members of our communities swami dayadeepanand underlined that we live in a diverse society and that has to be embraced he pointed out that there is one ultimate reality realized through bliss Ram Krishna Mission is a living example of this philosophy of Vivekananda Swami Vivekananda and Shri Krishna and serves all members of society equally without discrimination Swami Devendra Brahmachari ji similarly underscored the salience of creating spaces for dialogue and collectively seeking solutions to misunderstandings and discords Yogi Raj Dr Mangesh da pointed out that we are all one he cited the example of Swami Vivekananda who underlined this oneness in hindu religion in his speech at chicago hindu religion has held the principle of atithi deva bhava as core and thus opened its arms to members of all communities and religions janu dwipa nitai hari ji emphasized on taking the central message of oneness to the larger society the message of universal brotherhood will bind society Nikhat Noman explained the inspiration of peaceful coexistence in Islam can be traced to two sources that of the Holy Quran and the other of the Sunnah both pointed towards the unity of human race and unity of religion which manifests itself in the form of different tribes religions and nations Allah has sent messengers and books in all religions as we see them today but their message is essentially one Islam has emphasized that there has to be equality and non-discrimination towards non-Muslims. Salim Khan said Islam promotes peace which is ingrained in the very human nature. Islam doesn't believe in compulsion or coercion. Islam teaches that human beings have agency. Allah places virtue in forgiveness. Masrat Ahmad emphasized rejection of 
hatred and exclusion, citing the Charter of Medina. The Charter guaranteed freedom of religion of all members, irrespective of their religion. Father S. M. Michael pointed out the geography and other factors, though have given rise to differences in food habits, occupations, and languages, but common humanity is important. We are all created in the likeness of God. Jesus gave emphatically the message of service to all human beings. Father Michael emphasized on dignity of human beings in Christianity. Sister Sagaya reminded us that peace is an active pursuit and Bible lays primacy on justice and voice for voicelessness. Sorry, voice for the voiceless. Differences can make us appreciate divineness, creating symphony of faith. Seema Indorwala, explaining the tenets of Bahai faith, underscored that Bahatullah emphasized that there is unity, oneness, and rahmani in all religions. This earth is one country and the human race is its citizens. The Bahai philosophy embraces oneness of all human beings. Firdos Pavri pointed out that Zoroastrian religion the, in the Zoroastrian religion, the key message is that of good thoughts, good words, and good deeds, which help human beings to follow the path of righteousness and, guides, and has guided Parsis to integrate meaningfully in the U Indian society. Karl Saukar too traced back the teachings of peaceful coexistence in the Zoroastrian faith to Cyrus and a cylinder of human rights, which has guided human society for centuries. Ranojan explained the central tenets of Jainism, Ekantavad, one of the important principles, emphasized multidimensional nature of truth and thus the fluidity of the Jain religion. As Jainism doesn't impose a social code of conduct, it has helped members of the religion to integrate meaningfully in a multicultural society. Ram Punyani recounting Kabir's message of humanity and compassion uh, said that the essence of all religions is the same. Maharashtra's rich legacy defined by saints and reformers have taught us to live together with dignity. In conclusion, this, this meeting reinforced our shared commitment to promoting a society where differences and diversity enrich our understanding and appreciation of each other's divineness. We pledge to continue fostering dialogue, understanding, and collaboration among all religious communities, guided by the principle of compassion, service, and peaceful coexistence. Okay, can we just have a picture because this does call for a very, very nice picture where we celebrate this diversity. So can we all come gather in the front and we can all have a picture, thanks.